Hello, you're watching this week a weekly news review that brings you engaging stories on local, political and social affairs. I'm Batsir Namshir. For this week we have President-elect Hurusu will be sworn in on June the 25th. Traditional Natam festival will be celebrated digitally. The 20th edition of the BBC Cardiff Singer of the World competition is being held on June the 12th through 19th in Wales. Due to COVID-19, contestants were selected through online auditions. 16 voices are competing for the title BBC Cardiff Singer of the World as it returns to the stage in the Welsh capital. The competition is held at St David's Hall, but due to COVID-19 rules and restrictions, there will be no audience this year. Now in its 20th edition, the biennial competition has launched the careers of some of the biggest names in opera, including Dmitry Horostovsky and Jamie Burton. The last winner was Burton Andrei Kimach from Ukraine in 2019. State-honored artist and baritone soloist of the State Academic Theatre of Opera and Ballet, Akhbayr, has been selected to participate in BBC Cardiff Singer of the World 2021. MNB reporter Atsuku talked to a Mongolian cultural envoy in the UK about the upcoming finals. In 2021, we have some great news. Mongolian opera singer Ahbayr has been selected for a prestigious competition and came to Cardiff on May 26th. He was quarantined for 10 days and has now started practicing his singing. I'm in the organizing team of BBC Cardiff. I welcome and guide Mongolian contestants during the whole competition. This year, the contest will be mostly held online. Only few guests are allowed to enter. In this new format, the organizational team is giving much importance to supporting the psychological readiness of the artists. I'm happy to support Mongolian baritone Ahbayr during the days of the competition. In 2015, state-honored artist Amr Tufsheng participated in the prestigious competition for the first time. He became one of five finalists and the Song Prize finalist and was awarded the Audience Prize. In 2017, Mongolian state-honored artist Arun Batr was one of two Mongolian competitors. He was selected as one of the competition's five finalists after winning round two and was a joint winner of the Song Prize. A new leisure park has opened in Ulaanbaatar along the Toll River in the southern part of the capital city. With the name Michel, Smile in Mongolian, the 11-hectare park is an environmental learning space meant to help people connect to the natural environment. Mongolia's third longest river, the Toll River, flows across the southern edge of Ulaanbaatar. 11 hectares along the riverbank have become an environmental learning park featuring the rare native plants of Mongolia. It took two years to complete construction of the park without damaging the land's natural state. Visitors to the park can enjoy recreational areas including playgrounds, basketball and volleyball courts, river terraces and educational displays. I love this park and I feel happy to be here. It's the first recreational area along the river that we can enjoy. We strolled all across the park. This place is nice for children to play in. Since there is a parking lot, it could be our regular visiting spot. The area was originally used to reintroduce rare native plants, but was expanded to become a recreational and educational space. The park is open to the public 24 hours a day, but park rules will be enforced. Children under 12 are not allowed to enter unattended. Alcohol is not allowed on the premises. No commercial activities are allowed, and no smoking is permitted within the park. 
The park officially opened on June 12, but due to the increasing number of new COVID-19 cases, the park is temporarily closed. You're watching this week. Now let's take a look at Mongolia's current affairs. On June the 9th, Mongolia carried out its eighth presidential election. Kurusuk Ukhna from the Mongolian People's Party won the majority of votes among the race's three candidates and met election law provisions for becoming the sixth Mongolian president without a runoff election. That shows that 2,041,866 people voted in the election, making up 58% of the total population and exceeded the 50% turnout required for election results to be considered valid. Around 71,000 voters submitted unmarked ballots as protest votes in what is called white voting. Hursuk Ukhna won 66.7% of the vote to win the election. Right Person Electorate Coalition candidate Inkbat won 20% and Irtin of the Democratic Party won 5% of all votes. According to the newly amended constitution, Mongolia's eighth president will hold office for six years with a single term limit. Hursuk will take the presidential oath of office on Friday, June the 25th. Mongolian participants have been selected for the Open Doors Hub and Open Doors Lab programs of the 2021 Lokarno Film Festival. The 74th Lokarno Film Festival will be held on August 4th to 14th in Lokarno, Switzerland. The Locarno Film Festival is one of the world's longest-running film festivals and is also known for being a platform for art house films. From 2019 to 2021, the festival's Open Doors Hub and Lab programs have been focusing on working with filmmakers from Southeast Asia and Mongolia. In 2020, director Sao Tosom and producer Aruna won the top prize from the Open Doors Hub program with their film Ze. This year, director Ikhbayr and producer Nomintoya have been selected for their film The Water Garden. From August 6 to 10, the project teams will be introduced to international film industry professionals to explore options for co-production and funding. The other festival program that's opening doors for Mongolian artists is the Open Doors Lab. Eight international filmmaker-producer teams are selected to receive personalized training on strengthening their skills as creators. Director Bata Maklang was selected for the program this year. Last year, Mongolian director Orang received the Open Doors Lab Award. This year is the last year that the festival's filmmaking programs will be highlighting artists from Southeast Asia and Mongolia. But with doors now open to participating filmmakers, exciting new films from these regions will be reaching wider audiences. After eight years of construction, with repeated postponement, the new Ulaanbaatar International Airport is scheduled to open on July the 4th. The new airport is located 52 kilometers south of Ulaanbaatar in Hushukt Valley, Tuv province. It is designed with the capacity to serve up to 3 million passengers per year. The airport can be expanded in the future to accommodate up 12 million passengers. It has two runways, unlike Pointua International Airport, formerly named Chinggishan International Airport, which only has one short runway that manages arrivals coming from one direction and departures leaving from the other. The operations of Pointua International Airport will be moved to the new Ulaanbaatar International Airport in June. Prior to the airport's opening, test flights will be conducted. Prime Minister Oyunirdin noted that the area around the new airport can be developed as a free economic zone that can create a high number of jobs in trade and logistics. He emphasized that putting the new airport into economic circulation is crucial at this time. Mongolian baritone Amartushin takes the leading role of the King of Babylon in the opera Nabucco at the Vienna State Opera in November. The Vienna State Opera, one of the world's leading opera houses, has announced its program for the 2021 and 2022 season. For the new season, the company has scheduled around 60 operas and performances starting in September 2021. In November, the company will present the Italian composer Giuseppe Verdi's masterpiece, Nabucco.
The principal role of Nabiko, King of Babylon, will be played by Mongolian state-honored artist Baritone Amartushin. He will perform the role of Nabuko three times in November. Fierdi's opera is about the destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylon king Nabucco and the deportation of the Jews into exile in Babylon in the 6th century BC. As an opera singer, Amartushin has taken part in many international singing competitions. He became a state-honored artist of Mongolia at the age of 24. Amartushin has already performed at prestigious theaters in Italy, France, Russia and Germany. In November, the role of Nabucco will also be performed by prominent opera singer Placido Domingo. Yesterday, on June 16, Mongolia received 84,240 doses of the Pfizer vaccine through a grant from the government of Japan. It was the first delivery of a total of 2.35 million doses of Pfizer vaccine that will be donated to Mongolia through the Japanese government's COVID-19 aid project. A special ceremony was held for welcoming the vaccine with the presence of relevant officials, including Deputy Prime Minister of Mongolia, Amar Sehen, and the Japanese Ambassador, Hiroyuki Kobayashi. Mongolian director Byamp Surin Dawa's film, Wayne's of the World, started screening in France on June 16. The film made its world premiere at 2020 Berlin International Film Festival. In that same year, it won Best Picture Award at the Canadian Real to Real Film Festival. Ways of the World is Byamp Surindawa's most recent film. She is a Mongolian filmmaker residing in Germany. She has several internationally recognized films, including a 2003 documentary drama, The Story of the Weeping Camel. The film even earned an Oscar nomination for Best Documentary. The film Wayne's of the World tells the story of a young Mongolian boy, Amra, who grew up in the countryside. His peaceful family life was threatened by global mining companies. Amra longs for a modern way of life, but when his father tragically dies, he fights to protect his community. The film crew consisted of international artists from Mongolia, Germany, Saudi Arabia, Austria and Lebanon. Starting on June 16th, the Veins of the World is screening in cinemas in France. This week, Mongolian filmmakers in the U.S. premiered a movie titled Six Feet in Arlington, Virginia. The filming was done during the pandemic. The story is about COVID-19 discrimination against Asians in the U.S. The coronavirus Six Feet is directed by Ching Hu and produced by an U.S.-based actor, Bot Latter. The film tells the story of how the pandemic affected different ethnic groups and families and hardships faced by Mongolians in the U.S. In this great country of the USA, there are only a few Mongolians. Through this film, we depicted how Mongolians strongly bonded with each other and how they can adapt to any circumstances. The filming was done during the pandemic restrictions in 2020. It wasn't easy for the film crew to find filming locations and make arrangements. Six Feet is not only about talking social distancing, it also implies respect for one's private space. When this space is invaded, the possible damage is depicted in our film. Also, human greed and human nature is the subject we focused on. I collaborated with director Chingun many times before. This is the first time we worked on a feature film together. Also, it's my first role. I'm happy that I worked in a film created by Mongolians. The starring roles are played by Mongolian actors Siling and Botwater, and international actors Brian Lopez, Charles Smith and Ed Seitz. Six Feet is director Chingun's seventh feature film. The film premiered in Arlington, Virginia on June 12. Now let's take a look at the weekly Mongolian sports news.
In addition, she holds a silver medal from the Budapest 2013 World Championship, a bronze medal from the Jakarta 2018 Asian Games, a silver medal from the Asian Championship, a silver medal from the World Youth Universiade in the national team, and is an athlete of the Hitching Sports Committee. In the final, she lost to Olga Hrashevtseva of Russia, bronze medalist of the Nur Sultan 2019 World Championships and two times European champion. Somia won a silver medal at the same competition in 2016. 16, and five years later she won again and thereby became a two-time silver medalist. Amarsana, one of the best fighters in Mongolia, defeated his rival in the third match at the World Mixed Martial Arts Championships on Friday. His fight was one of the brightest in the one second full blast competition where he fought Bill Wilhelm from the USA in the lightweight division for a total of 15 minutes. And finally, according to the judges, Amarsana won his second one championship. Amarsana, who won 5 to 1 in the MJL 1 lightweight championships, won his first fight in the one championship on February 16, 2019. However, after the defeat in the second battle in November 2019, there was no official battle due to the pandemic. His opponent this time, Bill Wilhelm, who was unbeaten before, lost 5-0. Mongolia's national football team has advanced to the third qualifying round of the Asian Championship. The team that played in the second qualifying round of the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar finished fourth out of five teams in the group and has advanced to the next tournament. The 24 Asian teams will be split into six groups and our team will play in the preliminary third round. The two countries, led by four teams in the group, will compete in the 2023 Asian Championship. Mongolia beat Kyrgyzstan and Myanmar once in the group stage and scored six points the same as Myanmar, but Mongolia had the better goal difference. Mongolian esports teams and athletes continue to make a name for on the continent. For example, three Mongolian teams competed in the $150,000 PUBG Mobile Pro League South Asia Regional Championship, and all three made it to the top five. The Astra Academy team won five games. 295 points and $40,000. The bronze medalist of the PUBG Mobile World Championship, Zeus Esports, came second and won $28,000. Mongolia's third team, Apes Inc., came in fifth and won $7,000. The best player in the tournament was Action or Suhbat, a member of the Astra Academy team, who won $2,000. The 6th Para Taekwondo and 24th Asian Adult Championships are underway in Beirut, Lebanon. On the first day of the competition, June 16, 2021, a Para Taekwondo competition was held and six athletes, Baltarirtin and Ichtoya, who has won Olympic qualifications under the leadership of national team coaches Otton Bahter and Hospire, competed. Baltarirtin, a four-time champion of the World Championships and the Asian Championships in the 61 kg weight category and the K44 classification, won a silver medal. Davachotlo and Ichtoya won bronze medals in the K43 classification and 49 kg weight categories, respectively. The Mongolian football team, for the first time in its history, will play in the group stages of the Asian Championships 2023 in China. Next fall, it will take part in the draw of the Asian Championships. In the second round of the World Cup 2022, the Mongolia team completed all its matches in the Group F. Last matches of the group were Japan 5, Kyrgyzstan 1 and Tajikistan 4, Myanmar 0, which means Mongolia ended in fourth place. In particular, the Maldives played a 1-1 draw with the Philippines in Group A, and as a result, Mongolia became one of the 24 teams involved in the third round of the Asian Championships. Well, that's all for this week. Thank you for watching and have a nice weekend. Goodbye.